Okay, I'm gonna try to do this bootloader thing again, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. As I'm pointing at the screen, I can look over my shoulder and see what exactly is coming up. Edge of the roof. So, um, this thing's kind of hard to size up. What exactly do we have here? Can we see this? This is, uh, it's kind of, if you get to that, it's, okay, there we go, kind of, we could kind of, so I got to hold it like that, kind of that far away, almost a little bit past my elbow, bends, or that might be good, maybe even up here, okay, um, so I was a little uh, disappointed in the way the last set of videos came out, I guess it could be more of a, um, that would be a better use to be a rant for uh, developers to maybe maybe read and think about for uh, when they make improvements. First I have to explain my system because if you just look at it without any background you're kind of screwed. I have one hard disk. <sighs> Am I getting this? Yes, I am actually getting this. I'm not hitting the roof or the side of the camera or anything else like that. Um, I have one very small part, and a hard disk can be divided into partitions, and potentially each one of, if there's an operating system on there that's bootable, potentially you can boot from each one of them. And again, it can be divided up to four primary partitions, and um, at least uh, when you've got Windows on there, I think people that use the BSDs have implied that if Windows and Linux weren't on there, you can get up to 10 of them on as primaries, but <laughs> anyway. So my first primary partition is acting as a, a boot gateway for Windows, which is on the second partition, Windows 7. Yeah, I'm not even... <laughs> Windows 7, this is boot. And you're, you're allowed to have up to four, so that's two, and then there's a third one it's showing up graphically down here, but it's called, uh, I'll get to that, uh, this is like the restore, like if I, if I screw my windows, I could supposedly restore it by booting into this, and then it'll, it'll activate a wizard and let me fix everything up. Okay, so this is the fourth one, <laughs> you know, but in um, both Linux and Windows, you're allowed to have what are called logical partitions. And in here I got like a ton, <laughs> a bunch of them. I think two of them as, as we speak, or three of them as we speak are empty. They're going to be in storage unless I can find something to install on them. And I've got a bunch of different papers over here I'm shuffling through. But I guess I'll start with the one that is the most illustrative of my setup and also serve as a reminder. Granted, if I actually grab that printout, otherwise I'll be babbling rather nicely and I'm spent what happened the back of this one <laughs> not there okay well it's up here and I guess I'll just have to avoid walking away I'm just gonna have to do it this way and hopefully I can get it far enough I don't know hmm <laughs> that's getting me some writing well, okay, I can do this one. Okay, let's go out, because I'm not, <laughs> I don't have my camera image on camera, it's just, just the left of this white stuff. Okay, now I'll just show you this. This, this is the configuration file for Grub1. I guess I should explain that, um, I see a little bit there. Um, I, I should explain that uh, the behavior of programs when using Unix or Linux or anything like that is modified by text files that you can write with. They don't all end with a .txt, they're just written in text. And the program I happen to be using is called kwrite, W-R-I-T-E. That's the KDE uh, interface within Linux. You have a choice whether you want KDE or GNOME. Um, the, you know, look and feel the way it works. Um, that is the equivalent of uh, Windows's notepad. But I'm not going to bag on Notepad and tell you how great this is. I, I happen to like it. You know, if I if I had it in any environment, I, I'd probably like to use this. I'm not going to go into all the features of Kwrite right now. Let's see if I can. God, I just move around like a tornado. If 
I should rest this on something or what? Can I stay still? <laughs> what do I have? Um, some kind of disease or something? Or? Okay, now I can see it. And yeah, hopefully everybody else can see it. And I'll just go over what all this stuff means, I guess. Okay, at the top, default equals zero. That means, really, since the people that created this version of Grub start counting at zero, this means the first entry below it is the one that will have the cursor highlighted over it by default. So if you merely press enter when you boot your, into your computer, you will uh, only see, well, you'll, you'll see all the entries that are below there. Well, everything that says title, 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 these are all the entries that you'll see. And, um, but Windows 7 will be highlighted, right? Okay, the root node verify and chain loader is, I don't know exactly what it means, but I know that I have to have that there for it to boot Windows. That's all I know, that's all I care about. Splash image, even though I am <laughs> uh, running from uh, Ubuntu, I made a copy of, of Red Hat Splash Image from the other partition and dumped it in, oh no, right? No, actually, you know, back up, back up. I have, I've accessed this menu list file from another partition that has Red Hat installed on it. All these are within logical partitions. They get boot in there just fine. It just says menu.list. doesn't say where I got it from. Okay, I'm able to mount my other partitions from this partition. Just if you had Windows and you had more than one version of Windows installed, you know, you know the other partition you have Windows installed on might show up as the D drive, right? Or the E drive, you know, depending on how many you have. And uh, in the boot directory of my Red Hat partition, um, is a file called splash xpmgz basically it makes it look blue and puts the little fedora logo at the bottom when, when you boot up instead of black and white like it was with grub 2. I don't have an equivalent file in the Ubuntu partition I could put it in there and I even could um, uh, I don't know if I could really modify it but I, I, I could move this menu list file into the Ubuntu partition and I could uh, put this splash image in the boot grub directory in there and then I would be able to set up grub so long as I have it installed over here but I'm not I'm not taking that that risk I, I have it set up in a partition that has no grub 2 in it whatsoever so I don't have a risk of it coming in and deciding it's going to update things for me and uh, the short of it is the reason why I'm, I don't like Grub2 is because basically it's not able to properly configure my system to boot either Mandriva or the Haiku operating system. Uh, as you can tell, it's going to look a little bit odd here. I actually have two installations of Ubuntu Linux, and um, that second one, I basically decide I wanted to use uh, well okay I'm, I'm getting too far okay so these are these these are the, these are the things that I have to boot into a system first what happens is the the BIOS that comes up when you first boot in it'll pass off uh, control of the machine to the first first sector of your hard drive grub installs instructions in the first sector of your hard drive along with these entries and some of the parlance that's in it that looks strange to you now if you're not used to it to make it be able to boot into the different systems that are installed do I know all these things by heart no I know parts um, some things I know because I I, uh, I know where to look some things I know are just odd because and they were set up by the installer the Red Hat installer when I first did it and I didn't mess with it but uh, I'll get into all this stuff now I'm talking about a scenario, I, the purpose behind me doing this is not just to know how to use Grub1, why are you doing this, you know, Grub1, and uh, grub is already out, and well, I like Grub1, I want to use Grub1, and I, and I am in a situation where Grub2 was already installed, but I want to use Grub1. I happen to have more than one partition, and I happen to have a few of those uh, uh, 
operating systems that are installed on those partitions that don't use Grub2 yet. So, um, this is, um, Anyway, my choice is to, 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 to I've decided to boot from Red Hat because I don't want to have to worry about, I still might have to worry about Ubuntu. If I ever do a kernel update, it's going to go ahead and just <laughs> um, trash my system. In fact, maybe I should just go into the uh, software center. This is how you get rid of Grub2. You first have to make sure you have Grub1 in there, and they'll call it Grub Legacy. Grub is just means grab grand unified bootloader. You can see there is Grub2. Do I want Grub2? No. Let's just make sure. Yes, this is Grub2, so I don't want Grub2. I'm going to remove it. That's how you uninstall something in Linux. Then. There is I want Grub Legacy. I don't want I don't want these common files. I don't want to remove those. Then it just kind of scrolls along in the background. There's something else going on. There's a legacy version. Yes, I do want that. And this, this, the splash images, that's what that is up there. Boot, grub, splash, XPMGC. GZ. Install that. So this is how you install and uninstall packages. If I, if I wanted to install VLC, which is a very good multimedia player, probably the best. It's not good at grabbing camera images, but it does a good job. There it is. It's installed. If I want to install it, remove. If I want to install it. If I want to uninstall it, click remove. If I want to install it, click install. That's all you got to do. Well, you have to have an internet connection, <laughs> but all this stuff just comes over the internet. So you know, you go, you don't go to Fry's for your, for your software. Okay, so let's get back to all this. I have Windows Seven. I got the Haiku operating system, and I've got like one, two, three, four different versions of Linux on here. Um, mostly because I want to see what the state of things are, and also for just for resiliency. Now this menu list file, as far as I know, is in the uh, Fedora directory, which is another mounted uh, partition. <laughs> I just did a do -si do with my uh, screen there. Let's go, let's go down here. There's my system menu, and there's my storage menu. Now, see, now I can see things. Should have been doing this before. Okay, this is my Fedora, and happened it happened to change the disk label when it, when it installed. But this is the Fedora 12. These are all without disk labels, and those are as a result. So this is Fedora and AKA Red Hat. There's everything in there. There's my boot, Grub, menu list. I won't get into this too deeply, but that file there is a symbolic link to grub.conf, <laughs> which is which means that if I change this file, that file will change. If I change that file, that file will change. It's just it's almost like a, a shortcut. Um, it's probably a good way to describe it. Okay, so this file here is currently what is controlling the way my system boots. That that that's that's what it is. Okay. Now, I don't know how I would have done this without my droid unless I actually was, I'll just do a dry run here. Actually, you know, it's not going to matter. I, okay, let's, <clears throat> here is the splash image, and maybe I did put it on my Ubuntu. Didn't know it. Okay, let's go up, uh, just get back to this. Okay, so these are all the different partitions that I have. Here's just an empty fat partition. I wanted to put BSD on, D on it, but I found out BSDs can't log to uh, can't be installed to logical partitions at least by the installer. Other people imply it can't even run. Uh, this SDA11, which I don't have my list with me right now, but is Slackware. I could tell by this Slackware <laughs> bitmap that that's supposed to 
um, come up when 